Okay, welcome back. This is part two of our little adventure into sprites and uh, beginnings of game programming. I think by the end of this, we'll even get into the like, sound effects, which is also a big part of game programming. Um, let's see. So last time we learned how to do graphics windows, um, drawing sprites and paint and the format for that. Uh, loading the B BMPs into the program using the load BMP command. And now today, uh, this time, we will create the sprites in the program. So, don't forget about the help files. They have all the, the, the uh, commands you will need for sprite programming. They're very useful to refer to. Uh, some of them you use more often than others, like Sprite XY, um, Draw Sprites, Background Add Sprite. But, yeah, utilize that. It is very useful. Okay, now, how do you add the sprite? Well, all sprite commands follow print into the graphics window comma and then all the commands are actually in quotes for some reason I'm not sure why but they are so to add a sprite it's as simple as saying add sprite and then you you would name it and then give it the BMP name that you want to uh, sign it with um, let's see, Sprite, where do we want to put it? Now we've got one, where is it going to go? So, we use Sprite, X, Y, from the upper left, uh, let's say 50 down and 50 over. Another way you can do this, which is really super handy, you can use the variables instead, so let's say our ball is going to be bouncing up and down, so our, our only variable is the y direction. So we'll say y equals 50, and then make sure you leave a space, hit the semicolon, and y. And that does the exact same thing. Alright, now to add a background, print number one, you say background, and the BMP9 BG. So at this point, once we have everything where we want it, we'll say draw BMP. So print number one, draw, did I say BMP? I meant to say sprites. Draw sprites. And this will draw everything out the way we want it. Every time we make a change, if we want it to be made visibly, you say draw sprites. It, you won't notice any change until you issue this command. Now, if I say wait, we should be able to see the beginning fruits of our labor. So, let's see. Runtime error could not find the BMP. Maybe I called it the wrong name. Oh, I know what the, the issue is. It's in that folder. I forgot that. <clears throat> um, no, I forgot the sprite name. So what sprite do we want to be at that position? Well, that's the sprite we want to be at that position. Yeah, because if you have more than one sprite, it's going to be confused. It's like, what sprite are you talking about? And there we go. But these aren't going to do anything except close it because it goes to that label and runs straight to that. <clears throat> well, what do we want it to do when we hit that button? Now is the time to talk physics. Um, 
So basically, time starts at zero. The speed starts at zero. Well, that's not the speed, that's a change in y, which comes from speed. The, the maximum height it can return to on the rebound because of the law of conservation of energy would be the height it is at when it drops, which in this case is 50 the first time it runs through. But remember, we're going to be able to stop the ball halfway down, so we don't know where exactly that's going to be. So just say h max equals y. And then here is where the magic happens. New command to learn. Timer. Timer. What does this do? Well, after the word timer, you put a number. It's in milliseconds, so don't have it too small. How about 50? Every 50 milliseconds, it's going to go to this branch label. What are we going to put in there? Well, when we drop it, it's going to fall. So then we'll go do this fall thing. Fall. What happens when something falls? Well, it accelerates. So, well, first of all, time marches onward. T equals T plus 1. Um, it gets faster, so the change in y is going to increase. So dy equals previous dy plus um, 1. Doesn't make any difference, but this number I don't think matters. You know, I use t. It, that might work. I don't know if it's physically correct, but it works. Um... Then y changes by dy, so we'll have the new y is equal to the old y plus the change in y. Um, now, we don't want it to just accelerate all the way off the screen. So at a certain point, I told you to remember the number 300. That's because um, that's where that the black part begins in the background. And I want it to look like it's bouncing on the floor or something. So if y is greater than or equal to 300, then we've hit the floor. What happens when you hit the floor? Well, it bounces back up. But uh, one thing I'd like to point out, why did I say greater than or equal to instead of just equal to 300? Well, the answer is because it could overshoot 300 which, uh, without ever actually equaling 300, in which case it'll never, it'll never think it hit the, hit the floor, which it already did. So that's why you got to be thinking about those things. Um, now, timer is equal, I mean, we say timer zero because we want to stop the timer, and that's how you do that. Because otherwise, if you don't say this, even if you exit out of this this fall algorithm here, it'll it'll keep uh, doing it because the timer's still running. Every 50 milliseconds, it'll still be going here. So that's how you quit that. Now, we don't want it to. If it does overshoot y a little bit, we don't want it to continue to overshoot and keep overshooting and just kind of worm its way down into a little hole. So we'll say y equals 300 just to be safe. <clears throat> um, then we can exit out of here. So we'll go to the next label. What do you think that's going to be? Well, after it hits the ground, it's going to bounce back up. So end that if. Um, now, we haven't done anything, actually. We've just crunched some numbers, which doesn't do anything to the sprite. So we'll want to change the position of the sprite. Print number one. Sprite EXY. And this time I won't forget what, um, what sprite to specify. Sprite EXY ball. 50 over. X doesn't change because there are no forces in the X direction. But y does change, so use that as a variable. 
<clears throat> and then don't forget to redraw the sprites because otherwise nothing will look like it's changing. Draw sprites. And that is the end of this branch label. Now we're going to have bounce. A bouncy, flouncy, trouncy. Now what happens? Well, if you think about it, all the momentum it had in the downward direction, it's now going to have in the upwards direction. So dy is basically equal to negative dy. So negative one times dy. Um, what else changes? I don't know if anything else changes at this point, but let's um. Now it's going upwards, so every 50 milliseconds, let's do one of these jobs. Let's make a branch label called Rise. Rise. Um, oh, you know what? What happens when a ball bounces on the ground? Well, you hear a bounce, right? Let's include a bouncy sound effect. I have already taken the liberty to make a sound effect called boing.wave. Now, I just arbitrarily saved it in the sprites folder just to make everything the same. Now, you can play two kinds of files in basic. You can play wave files and you can play MIDI files. I usually play WAV files because I'm going to recommend a program here. It's called Audacity. If you don't have it yet, you should get it. It's free and you can record your own sounds. So... It's pretty useful. Make your own sound effects. That's how I made this and it saves it automatically as a WAV, which is useful in um, in this language because we can use waves. So how do we play this sound effect whenever it bounces? Well you issue the command play wave and then you specify the file and in this case it's in the folder sprites and it's called what did I say it was called? boing.wave. Now you think this is all you need to do, but I tried it this way and the ball would freeze for a split second at the bottom um, and then it would go while it played that. It couldn't play this and do that at the same time, but I did a little research and there's a little thing you can add on top of this called async and then it'll play the sound and do the sprite thing all at the same time. So we're all happy. Now, now what do we do? Well, let's carry on with this rise algorithm. What happens when it rises? Well, as usual, time marches onward. T equals T plus one. Wait a minute. I remember the way I set this up. I have time march backwards, which doesn't make any sense, except that when you think about it, falling upwards, is, I mean, falling downwards is basically the same thing. Uh, just, just bear with me. It'll hopefully make sense. dy equals dy minus t. Everything's backwards. y equals y plus dy. Now, why was everything backwards except dy? Well, everything was backwards because we're going... Well, this direction is basically the exact reverse of this algorithm. So if we have the exact opposite, it should do the exact opposite thing, right? Well, I have plus dy here because I had minus 1 times dy. I think to make things simpler, I'll take this out and make this minus. Then that should make more sense to you. Then you can see everything's just backwards. Now, physically... I'm not expressing things in the correct mathematical terms, but it looks 
realistic, which is, in the end of the day, that's what really matters in programming, or game programming at least, which is what sprites is all about. So, now, this is where HMAX comes in handy. We, we want it to stop at HMAX. So if we have, if Y is less than or equal to HMAX, then, then what? Well, like we had Y equals 300, we're going to set Y equals to H HMAX, just in case it overshoots it. Um, don't forget to stop the timer. Timer 0, not timer 90, timer 0. And then, what do we do? Well, if you think about it, now the ball is going to fall. So let's go to drop. End the if. Print everything out. Sprite X, Y, ball, 50, and the Y, print, one, draw, sprites, and, well, that's just about it. Now, let's talk about stop. What happens when you hit stop the ball? Basically, this is pretty darn simple. Just stop the timer and wait for more instructions. If you stop the timer, then it's going to stop clicking through whatever it's doing, whether it's going upwards or downwards. It's as simple as that. Now, what about reset? Well, let's stop the timer because we want, we want the ball to stop. But then we want it to go back to its original height, which was 50. And then we can basically just, just put it there. Print number one, sprite xy ball 50-50. Print number one, draw sprites. And wait for more input. Guess what? We have a finished program, supposedly. There might be some few some few errors in there, but that's what compiling is for. Ready? Well, it compiled. Let's see if we have any errors that are lurking. Ready? A moment of truth. Wow! We just created a bouncing ball! It stopped! <coughs> it started again! It stopped again! It stopped! Wing, 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 wing. Alright, I've had enough. How about you? Well, that does it! <laughs> Congratulations, You've, you're well on your way to creating your very own computer game. Well done.